struggling to get the broadcast. Yeah. Okay there, hello. So give it a minute. Try again. Get hello in broadcast. there, it's me, Egil. Nobody there yet. Ah. Calling the world. Please, somebody, come and have a word. I'm Egil Torsen, pal of Braggy. Uh, no way. Uh, hello. <laughs> that was his arm there. Hello, I'm throttling Egil. Later on, he will be giving me a tablet to look at where we can see your comments. So I'm going to rattle on a bit. I've got my coffee and uh, I shall be talking about uh, Anglo-Saxon stroke Viking weapons. There's not that much difference, obviously. I mean, you know, just put my coffee down. So the most popular weapon, I suppose, uh, that people will be asking about is the good old sword probably one of the most rarest things you'd see on the battlefield but here we have it's a reenactor's copy obviously of a sword now i was reading a book by my old professor martin carver very uh, knowledgeable about sutton who there you go you're on live now you're working oh, all right i'm on live hello everybody uh hi so and to my surprise, I found that one of the swords was pattern welded. And I hadn't realised that pattern welding went back so far. Um, Red World was 7th century and this was before that. So we're possibly talking 6th century. Okay, I have uh, John Matador. Afternoon, Alex here. Did the Vikings have any dedicated archers? Like the English Welsh longbowmen in the Middle Ages. They would have had the perfect height and strength to draw a bow. Well, it's interesting that you bring that up. There is a Viking hero called Egil, not to be confused with Egil Scala Grimson, who had to fire an arrow through a ring to save his son's life. I'll be honest, I don't know much more than that about it. But having said that, Bows uh, were looked on as an aristocratic weapon. Uh, in the reenactment group I was in, Regia Anglorum, excellent uh, reenactment group, it was only people of a higher class. And I think they got that idea from the sagas when the Lay of Rig, when he's going defining the classes of people from Thrall, uh, Karl, and then the Lord, and the Lord is said to be there plaiting a bowstring. How true that is, I don't know, in all honesty. Um, but you can imagine that in this country there is a big tradition, England, there is a big tradition of bows. And like you say, you know, they've got the height and strength to draw a bow. Bows have been around here. The earliest one, I think, is Neolithic. It's a flat bow. It's actually more powerful than the famous longbows in Agincourt. Uh, something just went ping. So I'm going to have to ignore the ping because I don't know what's going on here. So, yeah, and bows were, they're not a major part of the warfare thing that I've ever seen. Although, um, Tending more, as I say, towards the sword, which I was talking about earlier. I've put down some here it is. I've got a load of swords here, you wouldn't believe. It's like a, an old army store. There are various types of sword and uh, knife. The major difference being that you have here, double-edged, which is what we all know. And are familiar with. Some of you may not know that there were single edged swords resembling more a machete or jungle knife. There you go, look. This is a Norwegian one. Rough guidance says that if you look at the pommel, different countries had different stars. This is Norwegian. Just think of that as triangular. Uh, have we got a Danish one? Danish one looks like a loaf of bread. Of course, you have a down here. Watch out there, sharp. Yeah, I've got my own problems here. <laughs> uh, Good luck. 
there we go and English ones look like a loaf of bread there we go like that that's only a basic rule of thumb but uh, an interesting point hang on we've got uh, two more messages hi Eric this is from it's from me Margie. And how are you Alex oh, there you go so the scabbard uh, I forget where I read it but I think it's the Frankish laws that the scabbard is worth more seven times the sword which seems odd but not so going back to my friend here we have a sword how do you protect it and how do you carry it safely the usual scabbard would be sheepskin lined because the lanolin cleans the blade every time you pull it out and put it in it's then covered it's then got two slats of thin wood and that is then covered with leather you're talking about the equivalent today with a sword a basic one like this it's like the price of a ferrari they're that expensive so you've got to look after it extremely rare and now there is a law that if the king gives you a sword and you die before the king you have to hand the sword back if the king dies before you do you keep the sword and can pass it on so yeah you know it's one of those weird things so what else did they use well another thing that's iconic to the vikings and i think to the saxons is an axe axes are they double up this one's a sharp one nearly cut my finger on it but if you look at the blade narrow wide so you get the maximum amount of cutting with the minimum amount of metal and it's nicknamed a skegox or a bearded axe and that is because imagine this is the body of the man here's a head here's his nose and there's his beard this is more fighting but you use it to hook things a lot of battles took place at sea so you'd hook your long shoot you have a row of the guys doing this pulling it but also it could be used on the farm and it doesn't take a great skill of a blacksmith to make it unlike the sword here we have another weapon stroke tool which is the scrammer sax or wound knife sax means knife so the saxons would be called the knife people because they brought these in these were for freemen only slaves couldn't own them and it served a political purpose that when you went to uh, a meeting and you had to vote you raised your weapons and they counted the weapons hence the thing called a vapentak it could be used as cutting up meat vegetables skinning animals killing animals it could also be used to defend the homestead which is jolly useful hang on we've got another comment this is from eric oj is there a fighting style like vikings or anglo-saxons which one could learn today and kind of like how were the how are the ancient martial arts from asia when all this were, which are you still used today there is i've heard that there were martial arts from both saxon and viking what they entail uh, i don't know and i don't think anybody does exactly uh it has been suggested that fighting again i don't know if that's true sounds like morris men dancing to me it could be maybe that's where morris men came from i don't know i'm being honest with you here uh, maybe somebody out there knows more about it than me i'm sure they do uh so and andre lafay evening all well evening to you sir good to hear from you we're talking about viking saxon weapons and about the unarmed combat that uh, i'd heard about but i don't know anything about 
uh, it's interesting to know. Um, I think most of them are pretty handy. I mean, I can speak both armies, Saxon and Viking, were mostly made up of farmers. They weren't professional soldiers. You had professional soldiers with scars, etc., who would probably be like the NCOs and officers. Just going to have a drink here. But uh, who knows? And Bragg has sent another one. Oh, two here. Uh, to Andre Lefay, how are you, Viking brother? And you're more than welcome, Jones. Methodol. Keep up the good work, Edgar. I'll well, keep trying. Uh, he's come back. He's always gone again. So, anyway, as for the martial arts side of things, I really don't know. How are they preserved in, out the East? Well, um, I think they tended to be more based in religious centres and kept there. Hence the Shaolin priests and people like that. I can't really say much. Martial arts isn't my uh, thing. Uh, one of our su subscribers is Rob Napier. He's a big guy in uh, uh, martial arts. He's a second down in, in Kung Fu. And he's quite knowledgeable about it. If he comes on later, I'm sure he'll be able to answer your questions. But uh, at the moment, he's not online. So we'll get back to Saxon weapons. So we were talking about the scram sacks. They come in various sizes. This is more likely the size non-military would have. You, I use it to eat at feasts with. It's got a sharp edge and it's jolly useful. I want to say is it for cutting string and various other things. So that's another weapon. Um, we've also got such a selection of weapons the one I want then God is the club that's probably the most simple of all weapons and uh, a lot of them were tree roots things like that in that the churchmen in Christian times were not allowed to spill blood I couldn't have an edge weapon so they had a, had a club apparently it's alright to bash somebody's brain to a pulp but it's no good not good oh hang hey, on oh, oh just had a club thrown at his feet <laughs> That's me done. And here we have a club. Simple piece of wood, wallop you on the skull, will kill you stone dead. If you're a churchman, uh, I can't read the rest of this because oh, I'll stop it. Bracky! Anyway, I can't read all of that because yes. pressing my it's gone weird on me. Let's have a look. Let me think. Anyway, uh, I got part of the question about tactics. The Vikings had a thing called, hey, oh, we've got a bloke climbing on a balcony now. Uh, we had a um, thing called the swine herd, which was borrowed from the Romans called the Spartan Arrow. And that's like a form of wedge formation. And the tip bashes straight through the shield wall and then spreads outwards. Very effective. Um, so the spear can be used for hunting and in for warfare. Now you have the javelin, which this is more like, and used for hunting, or you have two-handed spear, usually like a snooker cue. Now Surprisingly, this is not the kind of weapon that every farmer could afford. A lot of it was a sharpened stick, heat, heated in the fire and hardened. Made a very effective but cheap weapon. Uh, I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. But the screen goes dark and I can't read it. And I'll be honest, I know absolutely nothing about this. And it's getting to be an alien beyond all redemption. No matter what I press, it does everything bar I want it to. Oh, it's got a bit lighter. So anyway, keep keep your comments coming because I'm sure Braggy will be back and we can sort it out later. Uh, it's amazing there's a coffee stain on here. It's not mine. I thought it was a button. 
It's quite interesting because at the moment I've got a window cleaner on the balcony here doing a splendid job. So just have a sip of coffee. So we've covered those weapons. Ah, it keeps going dark on me. It's, it's, an over here. it's annoying me now. Right, another weapon. This is for the... Uh, Daynuts there. Yeah, I was just about to go there. But I can guarantee as soon as I start talking about it, it's going to go dark on the screen. <laughs> and here we go. This is uh, for rich people only. This is called the Danax because the Danes introduced it. Imagine a line of people doing figure of eight. I won't do it because I'll smash the camera. Imagine with one William and his cavalry thought he'd got a magical battle winner. So they see them coming up the hill and when they're near enough, wallop. They bring this down and you have a man who's chopped in half along with his horse. Certainly uh, upset King William, which I'm sure you understand. You know, all those years of training for a night and everything else and some guy with a big axe chops him in half. It's a later edition and sort of went out of favour after Hastings, really. Uh, it's going to be okay for you. Okay, well, it don't go too far because uh, you never know. We are having signal problems now and again, Eggle, so just be wary of that. It's okay. Because of the atmosphere, thunderstorms about. Oh, it's happened. I'm in window cleaner. Did conversion to Christianity change the kind of weapons used by Scandinavians and Anglo Saxons? Well, as I said, uh, your Christian bishops weren't allowed officially to draw blood, i.e. they couldn't have edged weapons. So this Bishop Odo on the Bay of Tapestry, uh, you see this, you see him flying around. So yeah, you could say that that had changed it. Uh, and now North Worthy, oh yes, he's braggy. I think so, thunderstorms affecting the signals, I think. And uh, as so Andre says, it's disgustingly hot here. It's not exactly cool here either. I'm about to close the window because I don't want to upset the window cleaner. So as you can see, there's a diverse selection of weapons. I'm going back to one of the comments. Did Christianity affect uh, the type of weapons used? Uh, not the type, no. But I would think that the Mercus Mathery, the, the, the chosen man who flew the Raven Banner, you got topped whether he was uh, victorious or not. So they obviously didn't have that in the Christian times. But, uh, you know, pretty much the same. It's all pretty gruesome and savage. Uh, what happened in the late Viking invasions of England in the 900s after Christianity started spreading? Did they attack churches and, mo and monasteries less? Uh, it's a very odd thing about Christianity because, you know, if you follow what the historians say, if you read the Anglo-Saxon Chronicles, they say, and, I don't know, Mercy became Christian. Who they're referring to are the bosses, the lords, the ladies, and his immediate retinue. And yes... You know, you've got your monks going around saying, oh, you're burning hell if you do this. And they would say, oh, yes, and go to church. However, pagan festivals sort of went underground because paganism served more um, agricultural societies. There was more forum in that, and they'd pay lip service to it. And if you've been brought up with loads of uh, gods and goddesses, one more either way doesn't make any odds. So there's that. Um, yes, the mace would give us a headache. A uh, bit of murder. Right. But as I said, I mean, Christianity itself, uh, you basically, you wouldn't attack monasteries as, you know, you, because you get, uh, whoops, Braggy nearly tripping over a lamp there. You light. You put that there. You would be surprised at what's going on here. I've just had a guy climbing up a ladder, uh, opening the windows. I've had a 
We're already tripping up over stuff, passing weapons to me. He's now sitting there. Dad's gone to bed. I'm getting up in a minute. All right, he's, Dad's gone to bed and he's getting up in a minute. But we shall carry on because I'm a groovy guy. It's what I do. That's what JJ Kale did. Yeah. Carry on. After midnight. No, it's a song. Yeah, I know. It says after midnight. Oh, all right. It's anyway, Sorry about that. Yeah. Youngsters. You're not in the blues tradition. Yeah. Anyway. Enough about blues music, unfortunately. Hey, blues. Yeah, oh, I've been practicing. Um, quite surprised me. But anyway, enough. So, getting back to the Ooh, web. We are eight people watching. Yeah. I'm You're a superstar, mate. So, as I said, I mean, weapons probably didn't change. Well, they didn't change. Uh, the tactics. I would imagine there was no monasteries being attacked because the church would be on your back literally and you'd be charged with heresy, heresy or something like that. Um, Georgia Matador, excellent, thanks. I live near Greenwich in London, uh, near St. Yeah. Oldgate Church where the Vikings drunkenly killed the Archbishop of Canterbury after he refused to be ransomed. Yeah, that sounds. <laughs> yeah, um, there were incidents, obviously. I mean, as I can like even today, if the criminal in the world can make a few bob, they're going to do it. Um, and also, let's face it, as far as the archbishop is concerned, he'd be made a, a martyr. Um, but nonetheless, probably a very unpleasant. I understand it's even hotter in London than it is here. My goodness, you can fry an egg on my head at the moment. But uh, just a note to all you people, yeah, COVID-19, be careful. Also, don't sit in the sun without any sun protection. Uh, the other things haven't taken a holiday. So, you know, slash a bit on, be aware and uh, drink lots of fluids. I mean, I'm drinking coffee, uh, it's best to. Now, uh, a message from Andre. Uh, according to a document I read, when the King's Knights burst into Canterbury, a group of <coughs> pimps, um, it's quite possible. Uh, Beckett himself. He'd rather have a man on his side. So he made him Archbishop. Promptly, uh, Beckett took it into his head to oppose the king on everything he could. Uh, it was a very brutal attack. It smashed his head open. Uh, I've been to Canterbury Cathedral. My grandpa lived there. And in fact, he was preceptor of the treasures there. Uh, it's unfortunate that declared they would not trade with a pagan and that closed off a lot of markets Anglo-Saxon England oh he's got some water for me bless him tap to retry tap to it's a good person. we don't know it's just probably the hot weather that's causing it uh, and so Andrew says there's a lot of lagging so yeah I think the hot weather does impede I know absolutely nothing about this. Bragg is the guy to talk to uh, on this. But uh, keep trying. We will get back to you, honestly. Uh, it's, it's not easy, I know. But uh, be, please be patient. So anyhow, uh, did things change that much, really? Um, not a lot. You got, it's like at Sutton Hoo. Radwell was supposed to be converted that earlier, so presumably pagan. So there you go. Make of that what you will. Uh, and so Andre, anyone still here? Well, I am overseas. Do you agree with this? It's not impossible. It was apparently two degrees warmer than today. Uh, the major reason they started raiding was the inheritance laws. If you had 
inherit everything than everyone else. Well, no, sorry, mate. There's not much farmland in Scandinavia. You've got to survive. What do you do? There's a rich kingdom called England or Albion. Let's go over there. And that's what they did. Okay. I think anything it might have encouraged them. Yeah. You go where the money is. I mean, yeah, over there. If you've got the chance of earning a thousand pound a year or a hundred thousand pounds, which one are you going to do? More than likely, I'd go for a hundred thousand. But uh, and I think most people would. Uh, they're not much. It's it's a weird thing about I noticed about history and archaeology. In some ways, people are very very different. In other ways, ways they're exactly the same. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a very strange thing. One of the most um, weird things is I went for a day trip to Hastings with a friend of mine who sadly is in Valhalla. And I sat looking and uh, it reminded me of an archaeological find in Wales. And these were footprints from the Neolithic period. And you had children's footprints that dancing around a family group children what's in the box do you want to know if you want to know text us yes keep watching you want to find out what's I'll in give that you magic a box it's very light i'm feeling there's not much in there but what do i know okay um everyone out there is uh being safe that you uh listen to what your government says um uh, i know it's odd but they do have your best interests at heart. Uh, I carry a mask with me. Uh, my good friend in Liverpool uh, has made me some beautiful masks, one of which has got a beautiful Taurus hammer. It's very sweet of her. Uh, I won't mention her name because she doesn't know that I was going to mention her. So, now, did Anglo-Saxons hire Viking mercenaries when they fought the Vikings. I can imagine there must have been a lot of people crossing sides. Yeah, that was from uh, Young and Matador. Yeah, Vikings would fight if you paid them. In fact, later on, instead of raiding, they say, look, they're here, you can pay us some money and we'll go away. If you don't, we'll burn your villages and take slaves. Nine times out of ten, they paid up. And of course, every time they came back, up went the price. Did Saxons? Yes, there is a classic example in Egil's saga. Egil Scala Grimson uh, had issues, shall we say, with Eric Bloodaxe. And he was friends with uh, the King Hakon. And he sided, he would take the opposite side in a battle. Ironically, with an I've got a thing disappearing up my nose. Never mind. Here we go. Egil's saga. Egil Scala Grimson is the guy I place my character on. The dude. Yeah, this is Penguin Edition. For those of you who are in the know, I can't read the ISBN number because there was a sticker pulled up. Ah, uh, it'll be on the front cover. Front yeah. cover. Yeah, I'll find it for you. He's a good lad. There you go. I'll just pass this back to Bragi. That was almost looking dancing there. Yeah, I noticed that. Very sexy. Uh, was there a lot of contact between Pagan and Anglo-Saxon? Yeah, there was. Yeah. Um, you always have it on the side. Oh, right. um, yes, there was. I mean, you know, just, uh, it wasn't always equitable, but mostly it was, especially in Iceland. And it's worth noticing that the sagas come down to us mostly from Snorri Sturluson, direct descendant of Egil Skala Grimson, and he was uh, a bishop of Iceland. Later, didn't do him any good because somebody killed him in a political thing later on. But yes, I mean, you, you can, you're talking of small communities, it's just not profitable for you to ignore each other. Yeah, okay, you may decry each other's practices, but you still trade with them. Hang on a minute. Hmm. 
God knew what he was doing when he invented water. Okay, moving right along. Have we got any more? Sorry I lost you again. That's uh, Andre. Don't worry about it, mate. Keep trying. It's up and down. I mean, Bragi's had about three or four attempts here. Haven't you? What? Trying, you know, there's a lagging and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, it just, it just happens. No good worrying about it. I've looked at the quality of the stream. It's not too bad and it'll mm. play okay afterwards. Yeah, well, I mean, it depends. Sorry I lost you again for a while. Well, welcome back. Uh, like I say, we've been chatting about the... Do they want us to restart the live stream? Let me finish. <laughs> uh, about the content. Uh, did pagans and Christians mix? Well, yeah, hang on. Uh, Eric OJ. Was there anyone like Snorri in England who wrote about, wrote about their gods? Not as far as I know. I mean, we've got people like... Um, what's his name? Saxo. Sounds like salt. Saxo Germanicus or something. We get little bits, but the point is, when you're when these people are writing, like Bede, they a assume you know about the pagan practices, and b there are um, and they'll say things like, and they worship devils. Bede does that a lot, so you know, bear that one in mind. Um, I suppose Bede is, he's always called the father of English history. Uh, Braggy said, do you want us to redo this again? Uh, I don't know what he means by that, but presumably you guys do. Perhaps you'd like to say yay or nay, and we'll get back to you on that one. He's disappeared again. Keep disappearing, you won't sit still for five minutes. Now another sip of water. I know further south it's even hotter than it is here. By the gods, it's hot here. I mean, I'm sweating pretty much, but not to worry. Better that than 10 foot of snow, eh? That's next week. So, any more? The sagas that I think everybody should know, they were got at. <coughs> um, you can't help it. Snorri was a Christian. That's how he was brought up. So there's going to be Christian elements. And it's going to alter things about Christianity, as was B. Because it's a bit controversial. But, uh, yeah, it, it's odd how people influence other people. Right. I'm going to give you a treat. I'm going to open this box. It's already been opened. I don't know what's in it, mind you. Oh, we have, looks like a mate spoon, and nothing, oh, we've got some bubble wrap. Ah, interesting in this, I have seen examples of these crystals in the British Museum, from the Franks. Is now, that a good buy? It is a fantastic buy. And I'll tell you for what it was used, what we think. A friend of mine wrote a dissertation. All right, Chris. He wrote a dissertation on these because you find these on women's belts, not men. Right, yes. And it was thought, and I think it bears uh, fruit, that it was used to hold up to the sun to make fire, like a magnifying glass. Oh, I've not heard that. Yeah, and that's what he thought it was. And I don't see why that's not the case. I mean, who's more likely to light fires in the home is the wife. And you, there are cases of uh, craft shops where they've hung crystals up and they've caught fire because the sun has shone through and they have to take them out the window. You could try that one day. Yeah. Uh, so Sir so Andre's come back again. Good lad. And... As I say, this is a fantastic piece. It looks just like the ones I've seen in the British Museum. Now this... Do you want me to tell you what that is, or do you want to guess? Well, I thought it looks like a mate spoon. What's one of them? Explain that to me. Mate is it's an deep. Argentinian drink. A bit like tea, but you suck it through a straw. This isn't a straw. So it's a strainer of some kind. Hang on, they sat some 16th, 17th century. Strainer? Yeah. 
There you go. But that is really impressive. I you may know. not see him that close to camera. There you go. But anyway, that is really impressive. And how much should I have paid for them? Is it any good though? Is it a proper crystal? I believe so, it looks like it. It's got funny colours to it. Well, if it's a proper crystal, you're talking about 50 quid at least. No, I paid about 10 for it. That is well worth it, mate, seriously. It's authentic. Whoever did it knew what they were doing. Must have seen them. So, just put this back in the wrap of the bell. And... Uh, oh, I've got something else I want to look at. Okay. Well, I'll just... Oh, yeah, he's disappeared again. He has come to show us some bits. Uh, right, here we go. Like how we used to burn holes in our school ties. Uh, oh, there's one before that, sorry. This is from Young Matador. Would Viking Anglo-Saxon chieftain stains have been buried with all their finest armour and sword? Or would these items be passed on to their descendants? No, they would be buried with the person concerned. There is a story that a young, a young warrior was admiring his father's sword and said, forget it son, that's being buried with me. He says, that's what you think. Uh, because when you're dead, Dad, I'm coming in and I'm going to destroy, I'm going to take the sword. Which he did. Um, there are rules with the sword. Say Bragi's the king. Okay, probably silver plated. Nice piece of work. It's the sort of thing, actually. <coughs> we noticed this. When you went on campaign, <coughs> you get a bit of gold or silver for your wife. However, there's lots of pretty girls out there, so you go for silver plate or bronze for your uh, campaign girlfriend so it's the sort of thing if you're on campaign you buy this for your girlfriend because you leave it next week well it's only a fiver but is it authentic as far as i know it looks authentic oh i thought so yeah uh we've got another one eric oj wouldn't be wouldn't burying things just give people reasons to dig up the graves I hear in ancient Egypt they had riches in the graves and people would steal the riches. I had a theory about grave robbing. Uh, it was dismissed and feel free to accept it. Imagine, you've got two bars of gold. You bury one bar of gold with your king. That then increases that bar of gold's value to say double. Times get hard and you are short of money. You know that daddy's buried in a mound. Get that bar of gold out and it'll pass us through, which you do. Now, because when you look at some of these mounds and their um, thief, you know, the um, burial chambers, you, Stevie Wonder could see that there's somebody nicking stuff out of the mound. So I think it's possibly officially sanctioned. Uh, I was told they didn't think it's the case. Well, see what you think, you know. It, to me, it makes sense. It's a way, if you like, of storing up wealth. Well, if we don't discuss ideas, how do we learn? Exactly. I mean, I've had a number Maybe of... Maybe a wrong idea, but... Yeah. You know, if you think it's wrong, tell me. Uh, it's right. just a theory that I've had. Uh, we'll take it from there. Possibly so, but there was probably a reliance on respect for the deceased. Yeah. Um, but you just, I agree, yes, there are stories, you know, about all oh, the ghosts and things like that and people not resting in their graves. But then again, if you're a king, you have to keep giving out wealth, especially in the Norse and the Saxon periods. Even if you had wealth and didn't give it out, you're in danger of being deposed. You, you hear in the uh, sagas and things about a king being, uh, sorry, I'll be back saying king, uh, about kings being ring givers, sword givers. And if you had wealth, you showed it and you handed it out to your warriors. So, yes, it's six one after us and the other. But, uh, yeah. You want to stand up for a bit, rest your back? I can stand up for a bit. Yeah, adjust the oh. camera for you. Yeah. Hang on, folks. You look, you want to see the rest of his body, don't you? You've just seen a good shot of my groin. 
Like, thankfully to YouTube, we can edit that out. We can demonstrate shields and whatnot. Oh, I could stand up straight in your back, Forrest. Uh, and of course, we've got the good old shield. Kite shield. This is a later edition. It's called, as you heard Braggy say, Kite Shield. And, oh, I've got another comment from uh, John Matador. Do you read historical novels about Anglo-Saxons and Vikings? like Bernard Cornell novels, if so, what do you think about the accuracy of the combat scenes written by the authors? I have to admit, I don't have any. The only author, and I've forgotten her name, what was the name of the last who wrote about? It was more Norman stuff, she was in Derby Group. Oh, I forget now. <laughs> oh, see, I'm not the only one. As you can see, it had a profound effect on us. Um, you usually find the people who write story. about this are pretty accurate that uh, they're connected with uh, reenactment groups and things like that uh, but yeah you know it's worth reading if it gets you involved in uh, research and things that's good uh, Carlos Frith do you consider the Anglo-Saxon uh, riders of the east coast of Britain like the Danes or Roman federal federali that gradually formed the kingdom and native population. Ah, well, we talk about um, the invasion of the Saxons. To be honest with you, most of them were here already. They served, a Roman policy was that you, if you're an Englishman, you didn't serve in England because could nip off home. If you're on the Rhine, you're more tempted to stay. And if you're from the Rhineland, come on Hadrian's Wall. And we find that the uh, there's a lot of Germanic soldiers here. I think of the Sixth Legion, I may be wrong. Um, but then there was a war with the Huns in Saxony. So they brought the relatives over. Then we have Saxons hired as mercenaries, Hengist and Horsa, who supposedly came over in the spaceship. Brock is busy throwing the metal bits around. <laughs> yeah, hit him in the face. Uh, hit him in the face. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it's jolly That's funny. the Viking life. Mm, I'm saying nothing. But, uh, yeah. Stupid thing. Um, as the effect. Well, we've looked at, there's a lot of work been done on place names and Things like, um, did the Saxons annihilate the Saxons? Well, to be honest with you, the Welsh are the true English, are the true inhabitants of Britain. They were pushed west into Wales. The Welsh were pushed out and went to Ireland, who were pushing out the Irish and went to Scotland. It's called the Celtic Shuffle. Um, the term Welsh is a derogatory term actually by the Saxons, meaning short squat, that squat of dark foreigners. But uh, that's the way of it. Another message from Carlos Frith. Do you consider the Anglo Saxon raiders on the East Coast? Uh, yeah, I've already read that, sorry. Uh, considering the Anglo Saxon and Viking homelands were relatively close together, did the two sides consider each other? blood enemies. Did they know uh, another uh, prior to the Vikings coming to England? There was more fighting on the continent than a bit. We are used today of Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Iceland. There were no official countries at the time of the Viking race. So, you know, you've got the Huns trying to get into Norway and Denmark. You got them fighting off the Huns and trying to beat the Swedes. It's more clan warfare. In fact, people come to England to get away from a lot of that. So it isn't until countries are settled and boundaries are agreed upon that things calm down. Yes, they knew about, I know, like I said earlier, about Egil Skallagrimsson. He fought on any battle against Eric Bloodaxe. And I'm sure the same thing happened there as well. Uh, Eric 
OJ. Have you guys read or studied about the history and mythology of pre-Anglo-Saxon Britain? <laughs> I did a whole term of Anglo-Saxon uh, stuff uh, under one of the best Anglo-Saxon experts, Tanya Dickinson, who, uh, what she didn't know ain't worth knowing. Uh, I've dug at Sutton Hoo. Bragi, I know, has read a lot of stuff. I've been to Sutton Hoo. It was uh, an amazing place and I urge anyone to go. I've not been to the village of West Stow. I'd love to, but that's something to strike right off on my list. Um, Eric OJ, do you guys have Celtic ancestors? I can only speak for my ancestors. I don't know about Andy, Anthony, Andy. My ancestors, my mother's side were were named Branscombe, which means Raven Valley. We date back to the West Saxons. Uh, we settled, there's a village called Branscombe, I assume that's for something we own, and we tended to be on, we're not warriors as such, we were priests. Uh, so Walter Branscombe, who was my direct ancestor, was Sheriff of Exeter twice, he then became a diplomat for Henry III uh, because of his work in uh, stopping corruption in Canterbury. He was given uh, the Archbishopric of Exeter and he's buried right next to the altar apparently. I've never seen it. But uh, my other side of the family, the Carters, we also originate from the West Country. Uh, I'm presuming it's from Saxons because of my chin, uh, but intended more to be Hertfordshire. And I don't really know much about them because they didn't have posh titles like my mother's side. Andre Le Lefay, Eric, I know you weren't asking me, but yes, I do. Oh, oh here we go. Sorry, I'm, I'm jumping the gun. John Matador, how certain, pe how certain are people that King Redwald is the man buried at Sutton Who? I would say what swung it for me was quite simple. We know that Redwald was christened Paul and there are two silver spoons named Solus and Paulus and uh, to me would suggest a strong possibility that we're talking about King Redwald. Uh, it fits with Bede's description of Redwald. Um, but again, if you're in the area, go to the British Museum and look at the treasure. Excuse me. The treasures. They are fantastic. Really well worth going to see. see. And of course, the excellent helmet by Ivor Lawton. Very skilled smith. His work is exceptional. Okay. Well, I'm just about to sit down again, so you may see a blank space. Actually, I just... Oh, that's what you're calling a cat. Oh, I love pussy cats. Um, I've cat. got another mouse again. I've killed one, but I've got another one back. Oh. I hate mice. I don't hate mice. If you're outside, mice, if you're listening. Yeah. When I start coming living in your area, you can set traps for me. But if you're not paying rent, Outski. What you dislike is house mouse. Yeah, I don't want mouse poo all over the place. I'd get poison down, but the trouble is it doesn't kill them like that. They crawl away and then you get a big stink as you're trying to find the core. Well, you've got to find the source. That's what you've got to find and block it up. Well, I have closed my kitchen window because I think they're nesting in the fridge because I killed one and then literally two days later. So... Oh, look, it wouldn't hurt if I put bleach on the floor, would it, really? Or mop the floor? Well, that's know. tomorrow's job. Okay, well, Eric OJ, where is Bragi? He was right in front of me. He's, uh, this is Egg Hill Day at the moment. He's the technical brains. So, I mean, as I say, the kite shield. It's There's a different types of shield as well. I mean, you imagine one of the most effective shields you can have would be made of wicker. It means you can take a bash and it's light. And this is the thing. But shields were not only used for fighting. 
can you imagine around shield they'd use it as a they'd sleep on it imagine that with your cloak around you you're not in contact with the ground and you should get a reasonable night's sleep what i dislike oh we've got eric Oto. what i dislike is bugs flying all over the house and seeing spider webs all over the backyard yeah i know what you mean i hate to see moths in my wardrobe um and bugs they're a nuisance i mean if it was left to me i'd have a pussy cat and that would get rid of the mice nothing better than killing mice and a cat unfortunately i'd lose my tenancy if i did um which is a shame because i love pussy cats um so yeah you know mouse traps sounds brutal but it's quick and it's clean peanut butter is the uh, bait to use for mice or chocolate they love it and like me i do not like mice they deserve all they get now we've got a message from john matador <laughs> Would an armed stranger arriving at an ordinary Anglo-Saxon Viking village be allowed entry? What were the laws surrounding weapons and a community? Ah, Alfred brought in a number of odd things, not necessarily for strangers, but for people. Carrying a spear, there were fines. If you carried it carelessly, say took someone's eye out, there's a fee for that. Or you carry it over the back and somebody will there's a safe way of carrying it basically on that now if you had a sword i can find oh here we are <coughs> i'm doing things one-handed here so forgive me see this this is called a peace tie and if you're not engaged basically you tie your sword in so you can't draw it in anger and that if you were caught without the peace tie or undone again a fine could be instituted ah here we go uh so andre i'm back again on the laptop now so i can write faster good for you mate uh in case you missed it uh i was just talking about peace ties on weapons um there were fines for various injuries that Alfred brought in. Hang on. Uh, for mutilations, eyes, hands, or whatever. Hang on. There we go. I'm back on. Here we go. Who's that handsome man? Why it's me. So, uh, did societies in history have laws about owning weapons? I thought it's a modern thing. Certain classes of people, I mean, you ordinary, say, you're just a thrall, well, no, you're a freeman, and you win one of these, a sword. That would be taken off you pretty quickly. You had to be of a certain rank for a sword. Um, you had to be a freeman to wear a scrammer sax. Um, Danax, they were for aristocracy only. Um, a club was for anyone, an axe was for anyone. If you were a slave, you weren't expected to fight, so that was one advantage of being a slave, I guess. Uh, if you're a, a clergyman, you'd have a club rather than an axe because officially you won't draw blood. Apparently, battering someone's brains to a pulp isn't considered shattering blood but you know they have elastic views on various things if you want to have a laugh read about what animals you could eat on a friday which could classed as fish but uh, there you go so yes there were um certain limitations of course as you moved up the social scale if you moved up the social scale you're allowed to have uh, better weapons because you were more closer to the king or your lord and uh, they need defending uh, many thanks everyone for all of your kind responses I'm off to Greenwich for a beer don't blame you but don't worry I won't be drunkenly attacking any archbishops huh. gotta have a bit of fun in life but it's Friday night all I can ask you John please be aware 
wear a mask, social distancing. Yeah, you're all special people to us. We don't want to lose any of you. And yes, the numbers are coming down. I don't know how many. We had double figures last night. But please be aware, be safe. Um, we've got to think of the people in the hospitals who are working flat out. A friend of mine, she's working as well in hospital. And I want you all to be safe and aware. So, like I said, be safe. Any more? Will you not rid me of this turbulent priest? Ah, T.S. Eliot, Murder in the Cathedral. Um, I also, I don't know if you've seen the Black Adder one, where they do that, that's hilarious, but it's probably nearer the mark than people think. We don't know if Henry, if Henry actually said that. If he didn't, he ought to have done. Uh, but interesting, for those of you who go to Canterbury Cathedral, if you look at the steps leading up to where the altar used to be, you'll see big grooves, and that's where the pilgrims went on their knees on, on the steps. Uh, apparently, and I don't know if this is true, uh, Thomas Beckett's bones, relics, are there somewhere hidden away. The Reformation caused a lot of problems, especially also Oliver Cromwell. When in doubt, bless, bless, <laughs> blame Cromwell. Um, but uh, Canterbury Cathedral is a beautiful place anyway. There's some interesting bits. I don't know if I could say one of the things there, but uh, let's just say there is a doorway worth looking at. Not all are roses. But, uh, and that's the motto is always pay the price asked by the Masons. But uh, still, there is a school of thought, and I was told this, I don't know if this is true, that the cathedral was plonked on the site of a Roman god, I think it was Mercury, and that deep down in the cellars is a statue of Mercury. Could be true, maybe not, I don't know. But I know my family's coat of arms are in the quadrangle, where all the subscribers to the cathedral are. That's a bit sad, I know. Um, Canterbury itself is a lovely place to visit. There used to be a fantastic ice cream bar just across from it. But if you, um, next to the cathedral, there are some Tudor-esque type buildings. And that's where my grandpa lived. Dead now, he died in 62. But he was preceptor of the treasures. My sister has got pictures of him with Archbishop Fisher. Oh yes, we rub shoulders with the posh. Uh, it looks like me only with a broken nose. Uh, he was big in the Masons. He was a Knights Templar and uh, was a Roger Instruction for several years. So anyway, there you go. Oh, by the way, those of you visiting London, if you're interested in Freemasonry, if you go in the week, there's the Grand Lodge doesn't cost you anything, it's near the Haymarket, if you ask for tourist information, they'll tell you. It's well worth a visit, I went there, uh, there's a massive pentacle on the doorstep, you go through and it doesn't cost you anything, you can have a wander through, there is a double door of bronze, you can open with just pressing your finger, and there's all the kind of relics from the kings and everything. There was a miserable old git in there who uh, I nearly told where to go, but I thought better not. Um, so if you see him, a miserable old git sitting at a desk, don't bother asking him anything because he, he'll just come out with a load of vitriol. But it's well worth a visit. <laughs> uh, and I hope you're watching. There you go. Now then, another one from Sir uh, Andre. Henry travelled to Canterbury after the murder of Beckett. He was so distraught at the murder of his former friend, he went there to make public penance. He went there because he had to do something. Uh, it's not the thing to murder an archbishop, even if you do it accidentally. Uh, he was already in uh, a deep and dark, murky way. So he had to make some form of uh, penance. Sure enough, the guy did. He got flogged and all this and said mass and things like that. 
<coughs> it was a big thing. Uh, it's like a footnote to us, but at the time, this is a big, big thing. Can you imagine now, if you killed the Archbishop of Canterbury, there would be, it would be a big thing, and it was then, probably more so because of that. Um, it's an impressive place, this Canterbury Cathedral. I mean, I was, as I say, I've been there. And as you go in, there's a thing called the Working Man's Bible, the stained glass, that was saved because uh, I think it's one of Cromwell's troops had a pipe and went down trying to smash all the windows. Fortunately, they stopped him before he got there. There's some beautiful, beautiful work in there. And the Black Prince's tomb, a late friend of mine who was in D-Day, actually put the sandbags on the Black Prince. Again, Cromwell nicked his sword. Thanks, Ollie. So, yeah. Uh, there's a secret door at Can in Canterbury Cathedral. Uh, with three holes in it. If you put a finger into each hole and then turn them all at the same time to unlock it. I tried it there once, but I got busted in the process. So I asked uh, so I asked to, to, ask to desist. I could see it from both sides. Uh, I didn't know about this door. I know about the archway, which has got roses and a pair of uh, gentlemen's vegetables hanging down. Here a long time. I moved up to the Midlands in 1960. A meal out of four. But Derbyshire has always got something to surprise you. It always hits the sort of bottom rung, but it's not. There's a lot going on there. Um, well worth a visit. But, uh, it's like the when you go to see the cathedral tower, if you look at the finials, they were made by my brother in law's dad. Um, very impressive they are too. Periodically you get people abseiling down the side of it. But you've got to be a bit mad for that. I'm not a, I'm not a great uh, heights person. And uh, Sandra Lafarge, the door is on the right hand side of the cathedral close to the Black Prince. Again, if you get the chance, the Black Prince's tomb is impressive. When I was there they had his helmet hanging above the tomb. Uh, like I say, his sword was stolen by Cromwell, uh, the greatest king we never had. Uh, as I say, my late mate, Ar late mate Arthur sandbagged him up prior to going to uh, D-Day. Brave man and I miss him greatly. If you're listening, Arthur, from the next world, God bless you. It's a lovely place. Um, there's some lovely shops. I remember next to the... Uh, ice cream parlour which was excellent was uh, a nice cafe and there were these ladies dressed in Edwardian maids outfits and I remember having uh, prawn sandwiches for breakfast gorgeous I spoiled myself quite a lot on that holiday but uh, I'm worth it uh, Mackenzie Rose saying hello hello Mackenzie uh, Hope you're all grooving to the max and always welcoming people to talk. Got nine people here on the old chat. The more the merrier. Always glad to hear from you guys. Uh, and I hope everything's going right for you. Uh, we've been to catch up with us. We've been talking about the difference between Saxon and Viking weapons. I have to tell you, there's basically no difference. Hang on. No, weapons, certain weapons, certain classes. And the male shirt, uh, we've got a full male shirt there. Extremely rare. The king would have one, maybe his horse cars or housemen. Most people would have probably um, a leather jacket with iron rings on it if, if they had that. <clears throat> you see, what we take. Um, as every day would be luxuries in those days uh, I've got a, a conversation here 
Andre, uh, by saying greetings Mackenzie and Oliver Cromwell, followed by Mackenzie Rose. Hello, Sir Andre, Andre Lafay, uh, Delonge. There you go. In some ways, you know, I mean, these reformations and holy zealots that we had, I'm thinking of Henry VIII, Oliver Cromwell, we've lost quite a bit of stuff. No connection, so I'm sorry if you can't hear me. I'll press the retry button again. Nothing happening. Bragi! I think you can't hear me. We'll be down in the kitchen. I have a feeling I'm talking to myself. No problems. And here we go. Come on, baby. Yep, I don't know what I've done, but I shouldn't have done it. Come on. Come on. Oh, yeah. If you can hear me, I'm sorry. My screen's gone black. I've got a white circle going round and round and round. So, um, sorry about this. I'm waiting for Bragi. Every time this happens, he's somewhere else. But, uh, oh, here we are. I'm back. Uh, but I've got no comments. So, I'm assuming, here's Bragi. Uh, I have a feeling that they can hear me, but I can't. All the things have gone. I finally got me back. Uh, cheers, Buona. Time's going quick, isn't it? It's what, seven o'clock? Oh. I keep talking. Yeah, okay, well, sorry about that. I was just massaging my poor old back. Silly old man, eh? Uh, Brug is fiddling with the uh, tablet, so I it, hope you can hear me. I'm just check the chat in my, in, in my room. Yeah. Well, there you go. He's just off there checking something which I don't understand. Uh, but I say, we've been talking uh, about Norse and... Uh, Germanic stuff is not that much difference and we we're talking about Canterbury Cathedral things like that As I say, I was, if you have the chance to go there, please go there. It's great I have to say and York's gonna hate me for this. It's better than York Minster um, There's more going on there. There's better stained glass and uh, I'm probably banished from York now for saying that but it's the truth and York itself, I love it um, I lived there for, well, I did my degree in York, so that's three years plus another six months. I'd live there now if I could, but uh, all my connections and mates are around here, so I'm a bit long in the tooth to do that, but it doesn't stop me visiting. Uh, it's something for everyone in York. You've got history, yeah, but those of you who love chocolate, the end of the shambles is a uh, chocolate world. Well worth a visit, yum, yum, yum. Um, antique shops, I love them. Down Stonegate. Hello, I've got something back here. Presente. Um, welcome to the crew, Mackenzie Rose. Well, yes, yeah. a new commenter. Hello, welcome. Yeah. Broggy says, if you want him to turn up on air, he'll, he'll get dressed for you. I mean, he's not naked. He's got... Sweatpants. I'm about to go and water some more plants actually. He's about to water some more plants so you can bet your life that this will go offline. Every time he disappears, I think he's got a magic charm on this, that every time he disappears, it pines for him. It's a pain in the bottom, to put it politely, because I'm not sure on how things go. 
Mackenzie Rose, thanks. Yeah, nice to hear from you. Uh, <coughs> some of you guys out there, let us know how you're getting on. Bloody blah, you know, and see how we go. Bloody blah. Yeah, I don't like to say bloody blah. <laughs> Etc. Etc. So and so. So and so. Uh, these things slip out, as the actress said to the bishop. So you know, it just happens. Woof woof. Woof woof, baby. I'm gonna have a drink. Uh, have you talked about peasant weapons? Not yet. Hang on, I've got more coming. I went to York Minster one time, and an American woman asked the guy, "Is this church old?" The guy stuck his nose in the air and replied, Adam, it's far older than America. Well, yeah, it is, but no need to be rude about it. Um, I upset him. Uh, Minster caught fire, I think, in about 86. And I went there with my mother. And everywhere you went, it costs a pound a minute to run the Minster. And I went up to a gentleman with a collar on and I said, my father have made this a house of God. Thou hast made it a den of thieves. Uh, and he shriveled like a spider on a plate, and I meant it. Not that I give a damn one way or the other, I'm not a Christian, so. Uh, a friend of mine's wife works there, and I've been in the midst of more times than a few. It is interesting. It's also interesting, perhaps you'd like to know, underneath is where the Roman Nine Legion headquarters were. Hence, you know, it's, it's the centre there. Uh, they have a museum of artefacts that they've taken from previous archbishops' tombs. But why not, you know? Uh, one of the amusing things is when you go outside the minster, you'll see a column. It's actually upside down. As it cost them two grand to put it there, they thought we'll leave it there and for that. There's also a nice sweet shop just across the road. Uh, very nice. They sell, uh, sells traditional sweets. I'm a great sweet guy. Uh, they get a nice peanut brittle there. My pal Anthony likes uh, peanut brittle. So do I. Yum yum. Have you said hello to Anthony? Um, Anthony, hello if you're there. Your varmint is not there. So he's probably still at work. Uh, Eric OJ, for history standards, being older than America and Europe. Seems normal. Yeah, you, I've got to be honest, and I may get lambasted for this. The people who work in, they get a little bit of an idea that Canterbury Cathedral, York Minster, is theirs, Lincoln Cathedral, and they get a bit snooty at times. That is very unprofessional. You've got to assume that people know nothing. Now, it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean they're stupid. I mean, you can get a professor of law who doesn't know about Vikings and Saxons. It's because I've sat in years and looked at them and read about them. Doesn't mean to say they're stupid. Far from it. You know, uh, if you're trying to educate, nothing puts people off more than you being snotty about things. So just think about that. I had spent. I mean, I've worked at Derby Museum excellent museum by the way for 10 years i worked there the then industrial museum and at pickford house see we've got all sorts of stuff here in derby but the point is just because i work there and know about it doesn't mean to say that people come in and people not necessarily it's noticeable when it rained you got more people coming in because they didn't want to get wet same with any museum church or whatever so people only want to know about certain parts, certain things. That's fair enough. The worst words to come out of a guide's, a girl, a guide's mouth is, I don't know. And what I would say is, I'm not sure about that. I'll check up on it for you and let you know. And, you know, that's fair enough. Um, we've got a conversation here with Sir Andre Leface. The Fay, sorry. You're totally right there. It's not America's fault, though just the way things are. For example, we don't find a hundred year old house old. That's true. Eric OJ, I mean, one could go to Italy and then B 
there are some ancient Roman sites that say to people, this is older than England. Well, depends what you mean by England. You go to Stonehenge, you can say it's older than... And it's a pointless thing to say that again. You know, it really annoys me. You get people who slag America off because they can. And it's a cheap shot. If it wasn't for America, we would be in a deep stuck after World War II, the Marshall Plan. Study it. Without that, we wouldn't have the lifestyle we enjoy today, all the freedoms. Uh, we timed out apparently, whatever that means. I'll keep talking. Uh, I look like I've had a stroke. Here we go. Are we, are we playing? Come on, baby. No. Okay. I think it's the connection's lost. I'm not sure. Uh, but I'll keep talking till Bragi appears. It's the same. He keeps wandering off. Every time I need it, he's there. He's gone. But uh, as I say, you know, it's cheap shot. It's pointless. And America's our special ally. Uh, I must admit, the Americans I met have been fantastic. Uh, they're very proud of their country, and quite right. Um, and I'd love to come and visit you. Uh, that would be great. Not likely at the moment, but one day, and I'll be there. Uh, I'd love to go around each state. And each state, as you know, has got, like Georgia, I'd like to eat a peach. New York pizza or um, what do you call it uh, a Reuben sandwich at Katz's Diner do that you know, it'll be about 12 stone a lot heavier when I come back but I just it annoys me people attack countries and say ah, they have a bit. no they're not you cannot judge a country by one or two people yeah it's ridiculous um, well, quite apart from being racist, it's wrong. It's inaccurate. You know, people are people. Be right. You know, I mean, their uh, national traits, which you may or may not like. If you don't like it, don't go there. Simple as that. But don't sit there, you know. You know, I mean, it's very unprofessional if you're a guide. And one, one thing I, I knew, um, I did as a guide. Somebody was asking my opinion, and I said, look, I don't have an opinion. So you must have. I said, yes, I have, but I'm keeping it to myself. For all I know, what I think is right, you may vehemently disagree, or you agree with, and the next person would vehemently disagree, or you disagree, but you're trying to trap me into it. I said, it's just not worth it. And they seem to get the message on that one. Um, not spineless, it's just that I wanted to keep me job, you know what I mean? Hang on, we nearly got there. Come on, baby. Oh, no connection, playback, ID, very, very, uh, tap to retry. Oh, God. You know, it's a wonderful age we live in, but it's a real pain in the neck if you don't know what the hell you're doing. And we're live chat. Nine on, and... Things are moving, am I? Here we go. I'm probably talking to myself, but uh, come on, do something, man. No connection. This is the problem with live stream. Yeah? I'm sure Bragi would know exactly what we're doing. It's more than I know. Uh, oh, I did something right, I think. Uh, I'm back, and this is focusing. Here we go. Possibly. I hope you hear me. I really hate technology. I could see the use in applications. But it's like somebody who can't read being given a book and say this has got all the knowledge if you don't know how to use it it's pointless and also it tends to break down rather quickly but that's enough of my grumpiness 
I hope you're all uh, having a good time. I think this is like a universal thing at the moment, the, the hot weather. I This has no connection. Now give me a second, I'll sort it. And um, Grog has suddenly bought a bell and a pick. That's a Viking Anglo-Saxon pick. It's interesting if you actually look in Worksworth, there is a dwarf carving, which is mm. still alive. Got that. Well, I've been talking, um, so you know, I may have gone down, but I went down talking. Ah, oh, move that, move. move that wooden bowl and pass it to me, and I'll get rid of it. Like I say, every time I move, there's something in my way. Do you want the Viking ballpoint? We'll go on them. Oh, nothing to write about though, is it? Uh, what was his name? Because. God, you saw me on camera then, oh dear. Yeah. In my modern clothing. Yeah, please don't be sick. <laughs> nah. You're lucky he's been wearing a mankini before that. One day I'm going to actually buy you a mankini and be done with it for 10,000 subscribers. I look like a busted mattress. And then we're going to do a video called Did Vikings Wear a Mankini? No, of course they didn't. But why is everyone wearing one? Well, you could have a musician head with a mankini. Yeah, don't disappear because every time you disappear, this damn thing is. Well, no, I've got a solution to that. Here we go. There's a ring for me for now, one. Okay. Viking ring technology. Now here's a question for you. Mind, mind the head's a bit loose, so don't drop it on your foot, old chap. Mm -hmm. Is uh, would Vikings have gone into battle with a medieval pickaxe? Which that is? I suppose you use whatever you've got. Don't, it's got a loose head. Watch out! I'm not even going to touch it because it'll explode if I touch it. Basically, you use any weapon you can. I mean, it's quite an effective thing. Mind, it's a bit heavy though, to be fair. Yeah, but you'd have to secure the head. I think that's based on the a fine. I made that years ago. Uh, that, but, there's a lot of things like that around. Well, I've, I've just got a picture of a hammerhead whipping around here. <laughs> uh, Henry Coge, I will pray to the gods that things will eventually work out. And Mackenzie what? Rose, questioning him. But for I the live stream or the channel? Uh, I have a question. What's the difference between white raven flag and the red raven flag? I didn't know there was any difference. I've never heard of a red raven flag. Perhaps Brighy could shout it out. Uh, so Andre, they're listening. I've seen some very convincing moments and made me believe this. Well, the raven banner, as far as I know, uh, was held by a guy called the Mercus Mathry, marked man. And whether he win or lose, he ended up getting sacrificed. Not a good career move, I'd have thought. Uh, Eric OJ, what was the closest thing Vikings had to a gun? Uh, nothing. Bow, sling. Um, bow, sling. Um, not really. I mean, we know the Chinese had gunpowder around AD 1000. Am I right in that? I think it goes back older than that. Yeah, but I think it was originally it was used as uh, entertainment. It wasn't until somebody got blown up, I think they realised, hey, we've got a weapon here. Eh? But uh, Vikings uh, tend towards edge weapons. Excuse, excuse me. Uh, so I hope that one answers your question. I've got a dose of the hiccups coming, so please forgive me. Um, so if you've got any more questions please let us know uh, if you're experiencing troubles getting through don't worry just keep sending it yeah, I'm at wet we're, we're having trouble well, I'm having trouble uh, that thing be packing up so if you have gaps it's not me it's, it's the atmospherics that's an old phrase isn't it atmospherics I went out the crystal sets and old bubbly we call it weather. Yeah. But there's now only seven of you speaking, but seven's better than none. It's a magic number, seven. Oh, yeah. I was born on 7th of November. Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> Every time I move, something falls down or is in my way. Yeah, you're right. I'm getting crabby. I'm hot. And, uh, 
I've been here all the time. I'll, I'll tell you what, you could be promoted now to set man. All right. Your responsibility, all that. Well, it's not that. It's just every time I move, something falls over, traps me, or the oh. thing gets switched off. It's like putting in a badger's den. It is. I feel like a fat guy in a cake shop. I could have used a ruder one, but that would probably just taken off channel. So, hang on. Here's one of the tragic things of... Oh, God. Is that blooming circle thing again? Here you are. I'll swap you. It's going to come on. Here we have a copy of... It was... I hope the ball's loose. It know. is a bit loose. Um, it was made of antler and various other animal products. When it was found, Bentley Grange was in Derbyshire. It was offered to Derby, but they said they couldn't afford it, so Sheffield dived in and got it. Now, this is a copy. Or, as I say, originally, this metal, all this metal was gone. They got the little boar on the top. The boar is sacred to the Lord Frey of the forest. Uh, I don't think it had this bit on the back either. I don't know. You may correct me. I think it did, yes. Yeah. But I think it would be like no more leather rather than metal. I don't know. I'm just, oh, Jesus. <coughs> this bell is getting up my nose. I'll put that there. Someone's having a barbecue, I go. Oh, lucky them. We should invade our neighbours. Yeah. Hate their beef. Ooh, matron. That's the minute I'll be ready for my dinner later on. But uh, I'm going to go off camera for a second and retrieve that tablet because he's left it over there. It's like a rotten assault course around here. No matter where you move, you trip over something. Yeah, I'm just getting hot and miserable. Uh, has anyone. Hang on. Uh, here we go. Where will we go? Uh, uh, um, Eric OJ did German tribe before they were called Vikings contact Romans depends on what tribe they were uh, the Emperor Var um, the General Varius lost three eagles to the Germans in the Teutoburg forest they were found later nailed up to trees and God knows what so depends there were intertribal um, disputes, and the Romans played on that. Vermilla lately. Oh, her oh, as a message has been retracted. Vermilla, ah, uh, again, just because I want Bragi eat this her rotten beard. Hang on. Well, that's a waste of time. I'll keep talking, even though we're offline. Hang on. Did you ring, my lord? Yeah, I think I'm back online again. You said I was offline. Do you, have you got? Have you got us back, uh, Andre? It's nine watching on the camera. Yeah. If you click the back button, it can sometimes reset that. But click, press it over. Yeah, I think you're live. Yeah. Well, I'll keep chatting anyway, even though. Um, I'm getting hot and There's crazy. a load of weapons in that bag. I don't care at the moment. <laughs> I just don't want to know. I want to go home. I'm tired and knackered. Well, has been a long day. Yep. How about a three mile walk? Never mind. Have we, have we done it, Mr. Guns and Rats? You've changed your t shirt. Oh, no, I was hot. I was getting too sweaty. Okay, anybody? Uh, how did Eddie and Braggy meet? Oh, we met through uh, reenactment, didn't we? We did, indeed. Uh, it was a reenactment uh, organisation called Regia Andorum. Thoroughly recommend it. Uh, we were both Vikings in the Barbie group for a while. And we had a jolly good 